The Middle East, a term rich in political and cultural significance, encompasses several regions in Asia, with a particular focus on West Asia and parts of Africa. Unlike strict geographical boundaries, this term is deeply rooted in culture, allowing for some fluidity. In the eyes of the media and various international organizations, such as the United Nations, the Middle East is typically understood to include Southwest Asia. In Western scholarly literature and discourse, it is often perceived as a cohesive grouping of states in North Africa. When we seek to identify Middle Eastern countries, we examine linguistic similarities, shared ancestry, racial affinities, historical territorial connections, religious heritage, and political influence. Since the 20th century, the Middle East has played an important role as the epicenter of important global events. The Middle East has become the most critical and sensitive region, both economically and politically, with various global interests at stake. One important example is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which not only triggered the Arab-Israeli war, but continues to be a global focus to this day and attracts the attention of the whole world. Almost all Middle Eastern countries are involved in some way, whether openly supporting Palestinian fighters, openly condemning Israel, or providing aid to Palestine. Due to their vulnerability to conflict, many Middle Eastern countries have focused on strengthening their military capabilities. They have equipped themselves with formidable weapons, allowing them to defend their sovereignty and territory from pressure from global interests. There are countries in the Middle East which are very powerful countries, and if they form a political and military coalition, they have the potential to have a significant impact on the world. Let's take a closer look at the strengths of these five countries. The Taliban is a Sunni political Islamic nationalist group in Afghanistan. Nearly two years have passed since the Taliban regained control of Afghanistan following the United States' decision to withdraw its troops. Since then, the nation has been under international scrutiny, especially due to numerous restrictions imposed on Afghan women and threats to healthcare facilities. And in March, the group led by Hibatullah Akhunzada showcased seized U.S. military equipment. This leads to the question of the current military strength of Afghanistan. In 2023, Afghanistan is ranked 114 out of 145 countries in the annual GFP review. The nation has a PWRINX asterisk score of 2.3118. This year, its defense budget is 49.525 million US dollars. Unfortunately, out of Afghanistan's population of 41,618,240, both active and reserve personnel now stand at zero. Only the paramilitary remains, totaling 60,000 members. Before the Taliban took over Afghanistan in late April 2021, the total strength of the Afghan National Security Forces, ranging from the Army, Special Forces, Air Force, Police, and Intelligence, was reported to be around 307,000 personnel. Meanwhile, the number of combat troops available at any time was about 180,000. At that time, the strength of the Taliban group was not accurately known. However, it was estimated by the UN Security Council's monitoring team that in 2020, the Taliban had between 55,000 and 85,000 personnel. Eventually, they managed to create a massive military force by recruiting soldiers from the former government until it was completely depleted. Afghanistan has long been reliant on foreign aid to bolster its military strength. According to the U.S. Congressional Research Service, the Afghan military requires five to six billion U.S. dollars annually, with Washington providing about 75% of that. The Taliban's finances since 2021 have been unclear. Reports indicate revenues from the narcotics industry, 
extortion in the business world, criminal activities, and taxation in areas under their control. However, according to UN monitors, their income is estimated to be between 300 million and 1.5 billion US dollars per year. Additionally, Washington and Kabul have accused Pakistan, Iran, and Russia of supplying the Taliban with resources and military advisory support, though these nations have denied the allegations. The total inventory of the Afghan army is currently recorded at 530 units. There are 60 towed artillery units and 13 rocket artillery units. However, tanks, self-propelled artillery, and armored vehicles are no longer present. Afghanistan doesn't have a navy at all. As a landlocked country, Afghanistan is surrounded by Iran, Pakistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and China. This geographical positioning means oceans do not border it. The Air Force fleet is completely gone. There are no longer any attack aircraft, fighters, helicopters, transport, trainers, special mission, or tanker fleets, with all recorded as zero units. Despite being a poor country, the United States has spent tens of billions of dollars since 2001 to amass and equip the Afghan military to overthrow the Taliban regime. The Afghan forces once had a technological edge, being equipped with various Western-made weapons, ranging from modern assault rifles, night vision goggles, armored vehicles, artillery, and small surveillance drones. Compared to the Taliban, the Afghan forces were significantly outmatched. As of June 30, 2021, the BBC reported that the Afghan Air Force still possessed several aircraft, including 43 MD-530 helicopters, 33 C-208 AC-208 aircraft, 33 Black Hawk UH-60 helicopters, 23 attack aircraft, 32 Mi-17 helicopters, and 3 Hercules C-130 aircraft. Now, all of these have fallen into the hands of the Taliban. Initially, the Taliban relied on light weapons such as AK-47 assault rifles, a Soviet-era design, which they acquired from regional black markets. Additionally, the group possessed rocket-propelled grenades, mortars, and other small rockets. However, their most relied-upon weapons against Afghan and foreign forces were suicide bombers and improvised explosive devices, which have become one of their deadliest weapons. The Taliban also had a penchant for looting and using Western-made weapons and equipment supplied to the Afghan military. Eventually, in March of the following year, a tweet from the Taliban Public Relations Department, Commentary, claimed they had repaired and recommissioned about 300 military vehicles left by the US during its withdrawal from Afghanistan in 2021. Some of these included 70 mine-resistant vehicles and 27 vehicles resembling Humvee armored trucks or high-mobility, multi-purpose wheeled vehicles. Humvees, primarily used by the U.S. military, are light truck class four-wheel drive military vehicles produced by AM General and were extensively used in the Gulf War in 1991. Renowned for their capability to navigate harsh desert terrain, these vehicles are used by many countries and now all have been seized by the Taliban. Afghan forces, whose loyalty had been tested over the years, suffered increasingly after the departure of foreign troops and the end of U.S. air support. Many military experts believe that the Afghan military's strength has weakened due to poor planning and leadership, leading to low morale. In an era when many Middle Eastern countries, such as Morocco, Egypt, and the United Arab Emirates, are seeking peace with Israel, there are still countries that openly oppose Israel, notably Jordan, especially concerning the occupation of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. In an interview, King Abdullah II, the ruler of Jordan, boldly stated that they are ready to confront Israel if Israel oversteps their boundaries. Considering Jordan's stance, one might wonder about the strength of Jordan's military especially given that we know Israel has strong backing from powerful nations like the United States.
let's begin by examining Jordan's military personnel. Surprisingly, despite Jordan's bold stance against Israel, their military personnel count is relatively minimal. They have a total of 170,000 personnel, which includes 90,000 active members, 65,000 reserves, and 15,000 paramilitary. When you look at these numbers in the context of Jordan's population, their military personnel make up only about 1.5% of their total population of 10.9 million people. In comparison with Israel, Jordan is significantly outmatched. Israel boasts a military force of 646,000 personnel, even though its population at 8.9 million is less than Jordan's. It's puzzling why more Jordanians don't opt for a career in the military, especially since the salaries there are considered higher. The lowest military salary in Jordan is approximately 1,051 US dollars, while the highest salary hovers around 2,501 US dollars. Discussing Jordan's military personnel, we can't forget their elite unit, the 71st Special Battalion. This battalion was established in 1973 in response to the increasing threat of terrorism in the Middle East at the time. This unit has been actively involved in combating ISIS in the Middle East, with notable operations in 2014 in the Arutba region of Afghanistan and in 2016 in the Urbid area of Northern Jordan. In terms of equipment, the 71st Special Battalion is well armed. For assault rifles, they utilize the M4 carbine, which has an impressive firing rate of 970 rounds per minute. Their snipers are equipped with the Barrett M95, capable of hitting targets from a distance of up to 4.2 miles. They also use the M203 grenade launcher, which can shoot up to seven grenades. Next, let's discuss military budgeting. It's a given that without adequate funding, a military force would be compromised. From the information available, Jordan's military budget is quite limited, standing at only 1.9 billion US dollars. This budget represents about 4% of Jordan's GDP, which totals 45.74 billion US dollars. When compared to Israel, Jordan is clearly outmatched as Israel robustly allocates up to 24.3 billion US dollars to its defense. By calculations, Israel also dedicates 4% of its GDP, which stands at a massive 488.5 billion US dollars. It can be said that Israel has the luxury of dispersing such vast amounts due to its considerably greater wealth. Having discussed Jordan's personnel and finances, let's delve into the realm of their land-based weaponry. This area is crucial for Jordan if they were to face off against Israel, as geographically the two countries share an expansive land border. Hence, there's the possibility that Jordanian forces could confront Israel's formidable ground assets, such as the T-14 Armada tank. To counter Israel's land might, Jordan heavily emphasizes its army strength. In the main battle tank lineup, Jordan employs the French-made Leclerc tank. This tank, capable of speeds up to 43 miles per hour with a range of about 342 miles, boasts commendable weaponry. Its secondary weapon is a 12.7mm coaxial M2 HB machine gun that can fire at an astonishing 1,100 rounds per minute. Its primary armament is the Jayat CN 120-26-52 120mm tank gun. This primary weapon utilizes an autoloader system, which enhances the tank's efficiency, allowing it to fire roughly every 6, 10 seconds. What's more impressive is that this weapon incorporates the Athos Thermal Imager, which can detect and lock onto targets from a distance of 3.1 miles. Besides detection capabilities, the Leclerc tank's primary gun can also launch a variety of ammunition, ranging from high explosive rounds to razor-sharp penetration shells. Thus, it could be argued that the Leclerc tank is a worthy competitor to the T-14 Armada. 
Apart from the Leclerc tank, Jordan's army also possesses rocket launchers, notably the 412 HIMARS. This rocket launcher showcases incredible strength, able to target distances up to 310 miles depending on the ammunition used. Furthermore, Jordan's artillery choice is the M109 howitzer, complemented by the prestigious M982 Excalibur ammunition. This ammunition has been the talk of the town lately, especially following its success in Ukraine. With a 5.4 kilogram explosive charge of the PBXN9 type, this ammunition has frequently devastated Russian tanks. Even more impressive is its reach, able to target enemies up to 40 miles away, making it extremely effective in breaking down enemy assault formations. All the weaponry mentioned completes Jordan's ground arsenal, which consists of 1,588 tanks, 44,432 armored vehicles, 545 artillery launchers, and 88 rocket launchers. Moving from the Army, we turn to the Air Force. In modern warfare, this realm is arguably the most decisive as it offers unparalleled flexibility and a colossal strike capability. To bolster its Air Force, Jordan doesn't hold back. At the start of 2023, the country approved the purchase of 12 units of America's fourth generation jet fighter, the modernized F-16. Each unit of this jet is priced at 350 million US dollars. Surprisingly, this price is actually higher than the fifth generation American F-35 jet fighter, which is priced at 95 million US dollars per unit. If we crunch the numbers, Jordan's total expenditure for this aircraft purchase amounts to 4 billion US dollars. The reason Jordan opted for the F-16 over the F-35 is its greater flexibility and ease of use. In fact, there's a possibility that Jordan will increasingly employ female pilots in the future. Besides its flexibility and easier piloting, the upgrades on the modernized F-16 are no joke, encompassing 22 improvements. These range from radar enhancements and cockpit displays to the integration of five the generation electronic warfare systems onto the fourth the EU generation jet. The electronic warfare system equipped on the F-16 is touted to provide superior early detection capabilities, and it even employs signal jammers to deflect incoming missiles. Hence, from a defense perspective, it's clearly superior. In terms of offense, the revamped F-16 can carry the AGM-154 joint standoff weapon which has a striking range of up to 130 kilometers. If such ammunition were launched from above Jordan's capital, Amman, it could easily reach Jerusalem, Israel's capital. From land and air, we, of course, mustn't forget the Navy. In this realm, Jordan appears considerably weaker, possessing only 27 patrol boats, devoid of tactical ships or battleships. There is a compelling reason for Jordan's maritime limitation. Geographically, Jordan is essentially a landlocked country with only a tiny coastal strip to the south along the Red Sea. Therefore, Jordan sees no need to bolster its naval military capabilities. Having observed Jordan's specifications, it's reasonable to assert that Jordan can indeed stand its ground against Israel, given its competent army and air force. Moreover, if Jordan ever engaged in open conflict, other Muslim-majority nations aggrieved with Israel would likely rally in support. Just how powerful is Lebanon's military to even think about challenging Israel? And oh, we can't forget about Hezbollah's role in Lebanon. Okay, so let's talk about the Lebanese armed forces for a second or as many folks call it, LAF. These folks have got three units, the Army, Air Force, and, you guessed it, the Navy. Where do they stand globally? Well, according to the global firepower data, they're ranked 111 out of 145 countries. Their total headcount, 105,000. This breaks down into 80,000 active troops and another 25,000 in paramilitary. No reserves, though. 
and their budget just a little over US 1 billion. Yeah, not as much as some. But here's the kicker. Rankings don't tell the whole story. These guys have seen action. I mean, look at their resume. The Lebanese Civil War, 1975 to 1990. The Taif Agreement in 91. The Dini Battle between 1999 and 2000. The 2006 War, though LAF didn't directly face off with the Israeli army, but still. The conflict in northern Lebanon in 2007. Those 2008 clashes and oh boy, the ripples of the Syrian civil war from 2011 to 2017. Alright, pop quiz. Which branch of the Lebanese armed forces is the biggest? If you guessed the army, you're spot on. They've split their forces between 5 regional commands and 11 brigades. And if you do the math, that's a whopping 60,000 personnel. Now, when we talk about their weapons, a fun fact for you. A lot of their arsenal is actually gifts or comes with a friendly discount. Despite these donations, historically, the Lebanese army has always had some pretty cool toys in their arsenal. We're talking gear from Western countries, the Soviet Union, and yes, even the good old USA. Remember the M48 tank? Produced by the US, Lebanon got their hands on it in 1984. And guess what? Some of these bad boys were still in action during the Northern Lebanon conflict in 2007. And then there's the legendary T-55, which has the title of most produced tank in history. The Lebanese got them from Iraq in 1988, courtesy of shipments from Libya post-Civil War. Syria also chipped in and sent some over in 93. However, time flies and tanks evolved. Enter the M60, a slick upgrade from the M48 Patton. This beast was America's mainstay during the Cold War. But here's a twist. When Lebanon got their first M60s in 2009, they were like, uh, no thanks, to the first 10 units they received from Jordan. But wrapping things up, let's not write Lebanon off just because they're not flaunting the latest hardware. Their arsenal boasts some mean anti-tank missiles. Ever heard of the BMG-71 Tau or M712 Copperhead, produced in the US? These missiles pack a punch and have double the effective range of their competitors. And then, there are the French Mady, Milan, and Hot 2 missiles. Top of their class, these missiles zip around with faster speeds and even more impressive rangey. Alright, strap in, because we're about to dive into a topic that's super relevant when we're chatting about missiles in Lebanon, Hezbollah. Now, based on what Israel says, Hezbollah's got a mind-blowing stash of 100,000 rockets and missiles. And, oh boy, are they diverse. Ever heard of the Katyusha missile? It's like the OG of Hezbollah's missile family. With a reach of 40 kilometers and a 20 kilos warhead, this used to be their go-to for giving Israel a scare. But wait, there's more. The Fajr missile, ranging between 43 to 75 kilometers. The Zelzal, 125 to 160 kilometers. And the Fateh 110, which can zoom up to an impressive 300 kilometers. Now you might be scratching your head and wondering, who is Hezbollah? Great question. Founded in Lebanon in 1978, they're not just any group, they're a Shia political and military party. And their big mission, get Israel out of Lebanon. But let's get real. How does Hezbollah even think about going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Israel? It's hard to slap a label on their strength. But here's a hint. They're known as the strongest non-state actor on the planet. They claim to have a whopping 100,000 trained fighters which is not only more than the Lebanese army, but as many as the entire Lebanese armed forces combined. And I can hear you thinking, who's footing the bill for all of this? Look east, my friend, to Iran. They're the major financiers here, with the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps of Iran also handling the training. US folks have done some math, and they think Hezbollah's military budget is around a cool $700 million. The real ace up Hezbollah's sleeve? It's their rockets. They've got some serious quality and quantity going on. 
mainly to keep an edge over their main rival, Israel. When it comes to sheer rocket numbers, Hezbollah is giving even some countries a run for their All right, next stop on our whirlwind tour of Lebanese military power, the Air Force. Setting the stage way back in 1949, these guys have seen their fair share of action over the decades. And get this, right after they got started, Christmas came early. Donated aircraft began flooding in from countries like the UK, France, and Italy. You might think they have these state-of-the-art fighter jets zooming around. Instead, their go-to for combat is the Cessna 208 Caravan. Yep, that American-made short-haul fella that's mainly known for cargo flights. They also have the Brazilian-born Embraer EMB-314, which is kind of like a lightweight champ of attack aircraft, designed for easygoing airspaces. With no fighter jets to flex, the Lebanese Air Force's MVPs are their helicopters. They've got a mix the US-produced Bell UH-1 and Sikorsky S-61, uh, the French's SA-330 Puma and Aerospatiale Gazelle, and the Italian-crafted Augusta Westland AW-139. Quite the international fleet, don't you think? Let's talk Navy, the unsung heroes of the waterways. Boasting a dedicated crew of 1,600, the Lebanese Navy, well, they're a bit short on the equipment side. While they do have 86 assets to their name, a lot of these are basically the small fries of sea vessels. I mean, no submarines, no aircraft carriers, NADA on the frigates and destroyers. Just 22 patrol boats. But they've still got some interesting rides, like the American Advanced Multi-Mission Platform AMP-145 and Marine Protector Class Patrol Boat. They also sail the German waters with the security boat Todendorf class and Fassmer FPB-20. Not to forget the French Aval Gualum class and the British Attacker class. Word on the waves is they're trying to give their fleet a modern day makeover. Can't wait to see what they come up with next. As per the Global Military Strength Index, Iran holds the 17th position, outpacing Saudi Arabia, which ranks 22nd. From a fiscal standpoint, Iran could potentially allocate a larger budget. The current budget only constitutes 1.5% of Iran's total GDP, which tallies up to $359.7 billion. However, additional budget allocation seems unnecessary for Iran as it does not prioritize procuring main weapon system equipment, which is notorious for imposing hefty costs. Iran's procurement is deemed weak for two reasons. Firstly, it's susceptible to corruption. Secondly, Iran possesses its own facilities for manufacturing and developing weaponry, which is proven to be effective and on par with international standards. Let's take a look at Iran's land-based weapons. The existing data shows Iran has 4,081 tanks, 69,685 armored vehicles, 2,630 self-propelled artillery, and 1,085 rocket projectors. The Karar tank. A significant player in Iran's arsenal exemplifies Iran's domestically produced military hardware. This tank, manned by a three-person crew, is globally acknowledged for its intricate weapon system. It's armed with a 125mm 2A46 smoothbore cannon as its primary weapon, boasting a firing range of up to 3.1 miles. This main armament is also capable of firing various types of ammunition integrated with a satellite imaging system for enhanced precision. With this setup, Karar's primary weapon is recognized as one of the most competent laser-guided anti-tank missile launchers. Apart from its main weapon, there are two secondary weapons, a 7.62mm coaxial machine gun for close combat and a 12.7mm caliber machine gun equipped with an advanced remote control system. This system enables the Iranian military to operate this weapon from the headquarters as an auxiliary attack, leaving the crew to focus on their primary tasks. With its satellite integration and remote operation capabilities, it's no surprise the Karar is deemed sophisticated. In addition to the Karar tank, Iran's Zolfagar ballistic missile stands out for its lethal capabilities. This missile is one of Iran's deadliest weapons, 
and has been acknowledged by Russia for its role in the Ukraine conflict. With a range of up to 435 miles and a warhead weighing 1,102 pounds, the Zulfagar is capable of annihilating strategic buildings. If Iran's technological prowess garners recognition from Russia, it's understandable why Saudi Arabia has grounds for concern. Shifting from the ground weaponry, let's dive into Iran's air-based weaponry. Based on the numbers, Iran commands an impressive fleet in this department, consisting of 760 fighter jets, 196 support fighter aircraft, and 138 helicopters. As for weapons development, Iran stands as a pioneer, particularly in the drone sector. The nation is regarded as one of the most advanced in manufacturing these unmanned weapons, a fact consistently acknowledged by Russia. One of their deadliest drones is the Arash-2, suspected to be specifically designed for attacks on Israel, considering the strained relations between the two countries. The Arash-2 is a kamikaze drone assigned for reconnaissance and assault missions. Thanks to its exceptional visibility, it can flawlessly execute its tasks. Capable of reaching a maximum speed of 248.5 miles per hour and a distance of up to 1,242 miles, the Arash-2 can remain airborne for two days, gathering precise intelligence on the enemy before causing a massive explosion with its warhead weighing 573 pounds. But drones aren't Iran's only pursuit. The nation is also developing a secretive stealth fighter jet, the Conqueror F-313. This fighter jet was first unveiled in 2017, and until now, there's little definitive information about this weapon. According to circulating rumors, the F-313 has recently undergone a major overhaul, transforming into an unmanned stealth fighter jet. If this proves true, Iran would emerge as a game-changer in the air weaponry industry, rivaling the three most powerful nations, America, China, and Russia. From land and air, let's now transition to maritime weaponry. Despite its location in the arid Middle East, Iran maintains a relatively modest sea capability. Based on existing data, the nation owns seven frigates, three corvettes, 19 submarines, 21 patrol boats, and one minesweeper. Among all the weapons, the Ghadir-class submarine garners a significant amount of attention. This submarine is rumored to possess an advanced rocket launcher capable of firing the Shahab-4 rocket. This rocket can strike targets up to 1,242 miles away, with a warhead weighing up to 4,409 pounds. It's speculated that the warhead could potentially have nuclear equivalents, capable of obliterating an entire city. Beyond this submarine, Iran is also purportedly developing a nuclear-powered submarine to match the prowess of the world's strongest nations. Iran is truly a force to be reckoned with. Not only do they have an impressive arsenal of domestically produced weaponry, but their personnel numbers are equally impressive. With a whopping 1,015,000 personnel, including 575,000 active members, 350,000 reserve members, and 90,000 paramilitary soldiers. Iran is a true powerhouse. But wait, it gets even better. Iran enforces compulsory military service for its citizens for up to 24 months, which means they can quickly surge their personnel numbers when needed. And get this. Iran's personnel numbers only make up a tiny 1.2% of their total population, which is a staggering 86.7 million people. It's no wonder Iran is a major player on the global stage. Iran may not appear to be a superpower at first glance, but its strategic prowess and technological advances that have put them on the map. Their domestic arms industry and a large reserve of manpower mean they can rapidly expand their forces and their skill in stealth drones and ballistic missiles allows them to strike with pinpoint accuracy from a safe distance. Even though Iran appears to be cautious, it's their military might that has their adversaries on edge. Through his Bula TV, Yemen's leader, Abdul Malik al-Houthi, sent a stern warning to the United States. Any direct military intervention on behalf of Israel would be met with full-scale retaliation using all of Yemen's military assets. But how robust is Yemen's military might? Let's delve deeper. <laughs> Yemen 
Yemen's military evolution has spanned various phases and conflicts over the centuries. It began with the powerful kingdom of Himyar in southern Yemen, which thrived from the 1st to the 6th centuries. The genesis of a modern Yemeni military emerged when the Turks began recruiting tribes to form four gendarmerie battalions and three cavalry regiments in the late 19th century. Subsequently, Italy enlisted thousands of Yemenis, providing them with military training in their colony in Somalia before dispatching them to Libya to quell the Senussi revolt in 1911. Eventually, North Yemen and South Yemen unified into the Republic of Yemen in 1990, though the amalgamation stirred military and political tensions. Since 2015, Yemen has been engulfed in its own internal struggle, the Yemeni Civil War. This ongoing conflict involves various factions, including the internationally recognized Yemeni government backed by Saudi Arabia and the United States, and the Houthi rebels supported by Iran. This strife has precipitated a severe humanitarian crisis in Yemen, with various warring factions conducting military operations on its soil. After nine tumultuous years of warfare, through Oman's mediation, Saudi Arabian delegates finally sat down with Houthi officials last April to broker a peace deal. Fast forward to 2023, Yemen ranks 74th out of 145 countries with a PDOR in X asterisk score of 0.9391. Their defense budget stands at 1 billion United States dollars. With a population of 30,984,689 people, Yemen trains approximately 450,000 active military personnel each year. In addition, they command a paramilitary force of 375,000 individuals, bringing their total estimated warfighting strength to 420,000 people. Their army, consisting of 35,000 personnel, boasts a fleet of 4,800 units. This includes 100 tanks, 10 mobile artillery units, 40 towed artillery units, and 25 rocket artillery units. Their main battle tanks consist of various models, including the T-5455, T-62, M-60 Patton, T-72, and T-80. These main battle tanks are specialized vehicles designed specifically for ground warfare. When assessing Yemen's reconnaissance capabilities, we see that their fleet consists of vehicles like the Panhard AML, Panhard AML-245, and the BRDM-2. In terms of their infantry fighting vehicles, they deploy the BMP-1 and BMP-2. Yemen's armored personnel carriers, crucial in battlefields for transporting infantry troops, include the M113, BTR-40, BTR-60, BTR-152, HMV, and Alvis Saladin. Typically, APCs are fortified vehicles usually equipped with a range of machine guns. Yemen's artillery mortars feature the L1681mm mortar, Panhard AML, and other calibers ranging from 82mm up to 160mm. Their howitzer artillery includes models such as the M46, D20, S23, and the M114 155mm. The self-propelled artillery in their arsenal includes the two S1. These vehicles are built with integrated artillery systems, eliminating the need for a separate towing vehicle. The onboard artillery can be a cannon, howitzer, or other artillery weaponry. This mobile unit can swiftly maneuver between different locations, whether within or outside the battlefield. In terms of tactical ballistic missile systems, Yemen uses the OTR-21, Frog-7, Scud, and Hua Song-5. For their multiple rocket launch systems, their arsenal features models like the RM-70, BM-21, BM-13, BM-14, and BMBM-27. Their air defense artillery is equipped with the likes of the ZU-23-2, ZSU-23-4, 61K S-60, and Bofors 40mm gun.
to further bolster their air defenses against aerial threats. They utilize anti-aircraft missiles such as the SA-2, SA-3, SA-6, 200 SA-7, 120 SA-9, 12 Tor M1, 9K-31 Strela-1, Tunguska M1, and P-15 Termit. Since the Houthi group has reconciled with the Yemeni government, their military strength certainly warrants attention. Evidently, they partook in a military parade last September 21st in Yemen's capital. They showcased new cruise missiles like the Quds-4, Quds-Z0, Sayyad, and Sejil. They also possess precision-guided ballistic missiles such as Tufan, Akil, liquid-fueled, Tankel, Myun, and Badir-4, solid-fueled. Furthermore, their advanced anti-aircraft missiles include the Mute, Soccer 2, Bark 1, and Bark 2. Among their most sophisticated weaponry is the suicide drone Wa'id 2, a copy of Iran's Shahed 136, which boasts a range of 1,242 miles and is armed with a high explosive warhead. Lastly, the Houthi group recently acquired the Zulfikar missile, also known as Zulfagar. This Iranian-made medium-range ballistic missile is highly regarded for its multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle capabilities, allowing it to carry several warheads that can be directed to individual targets. Now, let's dive into Yemen's naval prowess. Their navy boasts a strength of 10,500 personnel and is equipped with up to 35 vessels, Notably, they have two corvette units, specifically the Tarantul 1, originally manufactured by the Soviet Union. Their patrol capabilities are enhanced with 15 patrol ships, including the Sana'a made by the United States and the fast 37.5-meter attack patrol boats, an Australian creation. The Navy is also armed with three mine-sweeping vessels from the Natya and Yevgenia classes. Their missile boats feature eight OSA units, a Soviet design, and three fast attack crafts of the Type 037 class from China. Additionally, they operate three Polnokni class landing ships, a product of Polish-Soviet collaboration. Now, let's soar high and examine Yemen's Air Force. It comprises a fleet of 177 aircraft, managed and operated by 7,500 personnel. This includes 76 fighter jets, 61 helicopters, 8 transport planes, 30 trainers, 2 special mission planes, and 14 attack helicopters. Among their fighter jet collection are the Russian-made MiG-29, the Soviet-manufactured MiG-21, and Sukhoi Su-22, and the Northrop F-5 from the United States. For transport needs, they rely on the Antonov An-26 made in Ukraine. Their helicopter fleet features the American-made Bell 206, Bell 212, and Bell UH-1, as well as the Russian-produced Mil Mi-17, Mil Mi-14, Mil Mi-24, and Kamov Ka-27. When it comes to training aircraft, Yemen deploys the Aero L-39 from the Czech Republic and the Northrop F-5 from the United States. In the realm of drones, Yemen possesses various models from the Vimple R-27 family. It's also believed that they've acquired around 600 surface-to-air missile launchers over the years, with many believed to be of Soviet and Russian origin, though the specifics remain undisclosed. Furthermore, Yemen boasts an elite troop force known as the Special Security Forces, renowned for their expertise in special operations, counterterrorism, and reconnaissance. This group undertakes a myriad of tasks related to national security and defense. This includes their roles in civil wars and the ongoing conflict against the Houthi rebels before peace was established. This force was initially founded as part of Yemen's strategy to counteract al-Qaeda's influence. Turkey's military, also known as the Turkish Armed Forces TF, includes the Army, Navy, and Air Force. As of 2023, Turkey is ranked 11th out of 145 countries in the Military Strength Index PRINX, with a score of 0.2016. This makes Turkey the fifth strongest member of NATO since it joined in 1952. Turkey's military has been around since the Ottoman Empire fell. It used to see itself as the protector of Kemalist ideology, which is mainly secular. Since joining NATO, Turkey has been working hard to modernize its military, and it's done a pretty good job. 
in 2023, Turkey's defense budget was $25.2 billion. Out of a population of 83,047,706 people, about 425,000 are active military personnel and 200,000 are reserves. This includes 50,000 Air Force personnel, 200,000 Army personnel, and 45,000 Navy personnel. Despite its strength, the Turkish military often finds itself the subject of gossip among military observers. NATO was originally formed in response to the threat from the Soviet Union to prevent the rise of fascist nationalism in Europe and to push for political integration in Europe. But Turkey, a NATO member, has been getting closer to Russia for political and economic reasons. This is quite different from other Western countries that have cut most business ties with Russia due to its invasion of Ukraine. However, Turkey and Russia have been partners for a long time in various fields such as energy, defense, trade, and tourism. Their relationship can be described as pretty tight. But things got a bit heated in mid-2022 when Russia got upset with Turkey for selling Bayraktar TB, two-type unmanned aircraft to Ukraine. This event became the talk of the town. It seems money can make Turkey forget about friendship. Let's move on to the Turkish army, which has 2,229 tank units, 112,476 armored vehicle units, 1,038 self-propelled artillery units, 2,107 towed artillery units, and 516 rocket artillery units. One of Turkey's newest and most reliable ground weapons is the Gökür weapon developed by the Turkish defense company Aselsan. The Gökür is a 35mm single-barrel weapon system capable of destroying very small targets that are difficult to reach by mini or micro unmanned aerial vehicle types. Plus, it's proven effective against ground targets at long distances, making it a great choice for air defense to protect important places and border areas. The Gökür weapon can be used in various functions, including ground-based air defense, with barrel elevation angles ranging from minus 35 to 90 degrees. Its firing rate can be adjusted between 60 to 550 projectiles per minute, with a firing range of up to 2.5 miles for air targets and 3.1 miles for surface targets. Let's talk about the Turkish Navy now. It has a total of 154 units, but Turkey doesn't have any aircraft carriers, helicopter carriers, or destroyers. The Turkish Navy does have 16 frigate units, nine Corvette units, 12 submarine units, 34 patrol ship units, and 11 mine warfare ship units. The Turkish Air Force is one of the oldest in the world and has the most aircraft among NATO member countries, totaling 1,065 units. These aircraft include 205 attack aircraft, 478 helicopters, 83 transport aircraft, 270 training aircraft, 22 special mission aircraft, and seven tanker aircraft. Turkey is also one of five NATO member countries involved in the alliance's nuclear weapons sharing policy, along with the Netherlands, Belgium, Italy, and Germany. Turkey stores 90 B-61 nuclear bombs at Incirlik Air Base, with 40 of them allocated for use by the Turkish Air Force in a nuclear conflict situation. But their use must first get NATO approval. The rest are stored as reserves. Turkey also has plans to develop a fighter jet named TFX, Turkish Fighter Experimental. This fighter jet is considered the first fighter jet developed by Muslims, and its price is estimated to exceed $100 million. Equipped with a two 500 horsepower twin turboshaft engine made in Ukraine, this fighter jet is capable of carrying a payload of up to 1.5 tons in combat, reconnaissance, surveillance, close air support, and escort missions. This fighter jet will also be equipped with a target tracking and imaging system, electronic warfare technology, 
navigation system, communication system, and various types of weapons. This original Turkish fighter jet is planned to make its maiden flight in 2025, an extraordinary achievement. At the end of 2022, Turkey also conducted a test flight of the Bayraktar Kizilelma, a supersonic drone with a low radar cross-section equipped with an ESA radar. Powered by a turbofan jet engine made by Ivchenko Progress from Ukraine, the Bayraktar Kizilelma can carry a payload of up to 1.5 tons, has a maximum flight time of five hours, and a flight range of up to 578 miles. Not a few were surprised to see the success of this supersonic drone in the test. Turkey deserves a round of applause. In addition, Turkey has a strong air force fleet and is confident enough to threaten Greece not to take actions that exceed the limit. Some of them are the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II, Northrop T-38A Talon, SIAI Marchetti SF-260, Boeing 737 AEW and C, CASA CN-235 Airbus A-400M Atlas, Lockheed C-130 Hercules, Eurocopter as 532 Cougar, Bell UH-1 Iroquois, and Bayraktar Akinci.